Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on the European Confessions. The following message that you're going to be listening to, it comes from a narration of a message that I received. The story reads like this. Hello my brother, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? My brother, I am a young woman and I just want to give a strong warning to the ladies out there who are doing this thing of online dating. They need to be very careful and they should try to do a research first before they go and meet the guy that they would have met online. This is my own story. It was during that time when COVID-19 had hit very hard. I was working somewhere else then what happened is that i sold this little phone of mine because i was feeling bored i wanted to be on facebook i then bought a phone that had internet when i logged in back to facebook that was when i saw that there was a lot of guys who had sent their friend requests to me i said let me just accept this other friend request from this other guy the guy he was really cute and handsome i liked him very much we started talking this guy he told me that his mom was a south african lady and the father was from zim and what had happened was that when the parents were still alive they had forced him to get married to a south african woman and then now he wanted to try to make sure that they in zim if he married me then his father's name will not disappear from the face of the earth the father came from Blawayo, so he had chosen me I felt so excited when he said that he had chosen me so that I can give him kids and those kids when they grow up they were going to make sure that his father's name was not going to disappear in the country from where his father came from and he then said that is it possible for you to find someone who can smuggle you into south africa and this was like when all the countries had shut the borders I then started going into WhatsApp groups, even though I was a lady. I joined a lot of WhatsApp groups. Any link that I could get, I would join into those WhatsApp groups. And most of these WhatsApp groups that I was joining, they were the cross-border truck drivers WhatsApp groups. When I was there, I would ask if there is anyone who was traveling to South Africa. He was also looking for someone on his side. We then found this other guy who was a cross-border truck driver and we asked him how much he was going to need so that he can smuggle me into South Africa. The guy then said that 8,000 rands, it was going to be okay. And this was like a lot of money. But I was amazed because this guy, he didn't even complain. That was when I knew that this guy, he had a lot of money. He said, I'm not going to send you the money, but when you bring my wife, that is when I am going to give you your money. We were lying to this guy that I was this guy's wife and it was because of COVID. COVID had caught me when I was on the other side of the border. We didn't want this guy to know that this relationship, it was still new. I traveled with this guy with his truck from Zim coming to South Africa and my mom, my mom, she was really not that okay. She said, this guy of yours, after I had sent my mom the pictures, she said, this guy with all the money that you are saying that he has, don't you think that they in South Africa, they are women that are close to him, that love him. Why is he not getting married to any of those women that might be close to him? Why has he chosen you? Why does he want you to smuggle yourself to South Africa? Why does he not come and see you first? But I kept on telling my mom that everything was going to be okay. Then I traveled from Zim coming to South Africa. We then parked at this other garage, me and that truck driver waiting for this guy. And when the guy came, I could not even recognize him because he was driving a very big car. Even the truck driver suspected that I didn't even recognize my husband. Then the guy came and he paid the money he even gave uh, this truck driver more money on top of that eight thousand rands that they had negotiated i asked him if he had only given him the eight thousand he said no i gave him more on top of that money 
and he said that it is because you have traveled safe so you must thank the person who has made it possible for your wife to travel safe we then went to his place my brother this was the first time to ever get inside a gated community i had never felt so safe in my life being around rich people all that I could see were rich people and very beautiful houses. We then arrived at his place and he gave me one rule. He said that at his house, I was never allowed to close the windows. I said, why? He said that he just loves to breathe in the fresh air. I just respected whatever he had told me. But one thing that I noticed about this guy, it was as if I had found myself standing in front of the judge. Anything that I was saying, I had to take an oath. I had to say yes or no. If I was going to be faithful to him, yes or no. Everything about this guy, it was more like you are taking an oath and if you fail to respect that oath, then something bad is going to happen to you. On that night, me and this guy, we made love. You know, when you are now dating a guy that is rich, a guy that you can see that you will be able to change the fortunes of your entire generations, there is something that you feel as a woman in your body, this excitement. I gave him all of my body on, on that night. Then the dreams started coming to me. What I would see is that I would see this black cat or this other woman that would just appear in that bedroom. And then this woman will just disappear. Sometimes when I'll be looking out of the window, I'll also see that same woman that seemed to be a spirit. And then that woman will just disappear. With time, when I saw this other black cat sitting by the edge of the bed, I screamed out so loud. But this guy, he got so angry and he said, why are you screaming? I do not like people who scream for no reason. I said, can't you see this cat that is just in our bedroom then he said that is my pet with time brother nashi whenever this guy would have left the house i would always see this spirit of this other woman this man he had lied to me he had said that my wife had just died of a natural disease but with time i then realized that this guy was lying to me there was this other time when i was left alone i was just in bed just relaxing this guy he had gone for his errands when i was in bed there was this other small dressing table and when i was just watching tv I heard that this dressing table, it was just moving as if someone who was invisible to me was pushing this dressing table. I kept on looking at that dressing table and I was really scared, my brother. Then I saw the drawer, one of the drawers on that dressing table being opened. Then that opened up the drawer of that dressing table. I didn't even see that person, but the person then threw the drawer that the person had opened so that i can see that there was something that was hidden in that drawer i looked my brother through the documents and i saw that there was this other envelope that had some documents that was hidden inside that same dressing table i took it out and when i opened i saw a lot of medical reports as well as this man's late wife's death certificate i read the death certificate and also the medical reports this woman she had died of breast cancer my brother i got really scared that was when the spirit of that woman appeared to me the spirit of this woman just told me that the same thing that is going to happen to me that is the same thing that is going to happen to you i got so scared never in my life had i prayed like i started to pray at that time each and every time i would pray and i would say god you know me god please do not let anything bad happen to me if you just let this man kill me what is going to happen to my mother please i cannot die i cannot die just save me please just send your angels to protect me when this man sometimes when you'll be making love to me i will be praying for protection so that god can protect me this woman then told me that she was going to show me everything 
that had happened to her one night she lifted me up and she went with me to this other place i then found out that there was this other gathering of occultic men and this man he was the only south african guy who was there a lot of the other guys none of them were south africans they were gathered in a circle as they were sitting and each and every one of the and each and every of those men that were gathered around sitting in a circle in front of them there was a head a living head my brother and when i was watching these men as they were doing their incantations i asked this lady where this man had gotten all of these human heads that they had in front of them this woman then said that from those people that have that they have sacrificed i said but i can see your head as well what happened i thought that you died of breast cancer what happened to you because i can see that your head that is placed in front of your husband the head is still acting as if it is still alive what went wrong this lady then said let me show you what happened to me everything that happened to me is the same thing that is going to happen to you the spirit then started showing me everything that had went wrong in its marriage what it what this spirit showed me was that this guy when he started having this chain of restaurants mind you this guy he has these restaurants that have the popular franchises so that is how he is making the money so he uses the head of his late wife this head it is placed in front of this restaurant then the head will be calling out the customers as it will be saying come 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 and enjoy today we have a great meal for you come come and enjoy so this blesses restaurants all over the country they are always full of people but this spirit then told me that this guy when he started to be friends with this occultic man he was then taken to ghana when he was taken to ghana that was when he was given the charms and upon his return this lady told me that she was the one who went and she was excited she went to pick up her husband at the airport and there was a strange thing that happened to that lady the spirit said the moment that the husband got into the car the husband said i have missed you my wife for a very long time please just give me a kiss so when this lady leaned over to give her husband a kiss she was surprised that the husband reached out for her breast she, the husband then pulled out the woman's breast and started sucking on the breast from there on this lady said that i started to feel this burning sensation on my nipple and from there on she got so sick that was when she was told that she had breast cancer from that time everything just went downhill until she died when she died she said that she watched her husband as the husband spoke with her occultic friends one who had a mortuary then my then the husband said that the spirit then said that the husband spoke with this woman's relatives and he said that he wanted to give his wife a good final send off a very expensive one so the body was supposed to be taken out of that government hospital and to be taken to this other mortuary a very expensive one but it belongs to one of his occultic friends when the spirit followed the men who were transporting her deceased body to that expensive mortuary she said that the worst thing happened to her body she said that at that time she was not fully dead she could feel she could see everything that was going on but everyone around just thought that this is a deceased body when she was taken to that mortuary that was when those men started to cut off her head until they had removed the head then they placed another spiritual head so that the relatives when they will be doing the body viewing they can actually think that indeed this was a full body but what they didn't realize was that they, it was just a, an illusion they buried her with the head missing then they took the head that they had separated from the body and they mixed the head with some charms and it kept on breathing 
as if it were still alive. This is what this spirit showed to me. Then she said, the same thing is going to happen to you. The same thing is going to happen to you. I said, what do you mean? Then she said that for him to keep on making money, he has to also sacrifice you so that you can help me calling these customers to his restaurant. I said, how am I going to die? The spirit then said that he is going to use the same herbs that he used on me. He is going to place those charms in his mouth and as you will be sucking on your breasts, on your nipples, that is when the charms is going to enter into your nipples, then the charms will start causing breast cancer until you die. The spirit then carried me back to that blesser's house and my brother when i woke up i then found myself not lying in bed anymore but i was lying on the floor how i had gotten out of bed and went to the floor i truly do not even know when i woke up my brother the first thing that i did i downloaded a bible on my phone and i kept on praying reading whatever verse that i would come across then there was this other time when I saw that there was no bread in the house. I then said, let me get out of the house so that I can go and buy bread. He had showed me this other shopping complex that was close to their gated community. When I just went out of their gated community, whilst I was walking, that was when I met this other police van. There was a man who was driving and there was a woman. Both of them, they were police officers. They just stopped me because at that time, no one was allowed to walk around without permission. They stopped me and they started asking me a lot of questions. That was when I told them that I was illegally in the country. They were even surprised because they were not used to someone just approaching them and telling them that they are illegally in the country. So they thought that maybe I am a victim of gender-based violence. The lady then took me to the side. After she had locked me at the back of the police car, she started asking me questions. She said, have you been abused? Have you been raped? Is your husband abusing you? I said, no, he is not abusing me, but I am here illegally. She then said, tell me you can trust me. Are you a victim of abuse? I said, no. Then they locked me up and then they went with me to the police station. I then spent the whole lockdown while i was locked up after the lockdown was over that was when i was deported back home but i felt so much safe in the hands of the police than with that blesser dear listeners right there was a message that was sent to us by one of our listeners she cried throughout a confession yo 